Hey everybody, welcome back to Guns and Gadgets, the premier source for Second Amendment news, and today I'm going to tell you about a groundbreaking decision that came out of the Third Circuit yesterday, and it has to do with non-violent felons being stripped of their Second Amendment rights. Sit by and watch this one, because this is going to have huge ramifications going forward in the Second Amendment restrictions area by government. Before I jump into that, I want to thank the sponsor of the video, and that's the Sonoran Desert Institute. SDI is an accredited college. It's a distance learning institute where everything is mailed right to your door, where you can take individual classes or you can even earn your degree in classes such as ballistics or gunsmithing and the like. There's a ton of different options. You can check out their link down below. It's sdi.edu slash gng, and they even have financial aid available. Check them out, guys and gals, sdi.edu slash gng. Thanks to SDI for sponsoring this video. All right, today we're gonna to go out and talk about that decision that came down yesterday afternoon in the Third Circuit. And in this case, uh, I wanna get his name right, Brian Range, uh, I think it's like 20 plus years ago, Brian Range pleaded guilty in a Pennsylvania state court for basically uh, lying on his application for food stamps. He lied about his income so that he would qualify to receive government food stamps and it came back to bite him. He got uh, taken to court, he pleaded guilty, and then became a prohibited person because that law is this, some states have what's called like super misdemeanors and they're treated like felonies because uh, felony in basically two years or longer that the sentence could be. So he pleaded guilty, he was stripped from his second amendment rights, he became a prohibited person and he kept fighting and he kept fighting and finally yesterday, uh, his efforts came through. Now, before I jump into what the court said, I, it, it has to be pointed out, it's very important, that this was specific to his case. This was an as-applied challenge. It's not a blanket challenge. However, this decision can absolutely be used by others in the same scenario going forward. So this uh, court uh, said, and I'm going to read it to you, it, it obviously went to Bruin, right? And we all know what the Bruin case has done. It's reset the uh, the threshold in which government can take people's Second Amendment rights away uh, if they're violent or, or, or for whatever reason, uh, whatever law they violated, right? So it reset that requirement to the text, history, and tradition of the country, and that anything that the government has written into law or whatever has to be consistent with the nation's historical tradition of firearm regulation at the time of the adoption of the Second Amendment. And the challenge here was against 18 U.S.C. 922 G1. Uh, and on, in this, uh, the court found that the, the state, the government, had not met its burden in saying that the restriction on uh, this Mr. Range that was put on him was consistent with the nation's historical tradition of firearm regulation. When the Second Amendment was adopted, there were no restrictions that said if you lie uh, to, to collect food stamps, uh, then you will be no longer able to defend yourself for the rest of your life. Uh, so this, these judges got it right. Now, this is a big, huge decision because this, I imagine there are a bunch of people right now considering filing on their own behalf, because a lot of people have been stripped for uh, reason, for, for laws just like this, for uh, being made a prohibited person for a non-violent felony, and this will set the stage for a waterfall of filings. Now, what still is yet to be seen or known is will the government uh, re reach out and appeal this to the Supreme Court to have their input on this? similar to what they did with the bump stock decision, uh, they may want the federal, the, the highest court in the land to, to have input on this, or they may not. We'll see, but as of right now, in this one case as applied, uh, this gentleman is no longer a prohibited person, and that is good because our rights don't get stripped away because you falsify an application for food stamps. That's not how this country was created yet, that's what some states have made it into. So this is just another section of 18 U.S.C. 922G that's been found unconstitutional. Uh, there's been several of them, and the government is reeling. Guys, it's a good time to be in the Second Amendment game. 
Uh, the government is taking loss after loss after loss. The Bruin decision has a lot to do with it. The Heller decision has a lot to do with it. Uh, and uh, the best is yet to come. There will be a lot coming out of uh, Judge Benitez's court soon. I know a lot of people are sending me messages every day. Why is he taking so long? Uh, he's writing five, not one, five major decisions that will probably be, li be landmark decisions and he doesn't want them to be easily uh, appealed and challenged. So he's got a lot of work on his plate. But I will bring you up to date. If you want to stay up to date with that or anything else in the Second Amendment from litigation to legislation or anything else in between, subscribe to this channel down below and I'll bring you that on a daily basis. Thank you guys for your time. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.